Hello and welcome to the 5 Minute Film Club and also Happy Halloween, well, for tomorrow anyway. This week's film is Friday the 13th, directed by Sean S. Cunningham and released in 1980, so that means this year it is now 40 years old. Friday the 13th tells the story of a group of teenage camp counsellors getting an old campground back up and running, however this is Camp Crystal Lake and it's got a death curse. As the film goes on, all of the counsellors are mysteriously and violently picked off one by one, either with axes, knives, or maybe just a nice arrow through the throat. Yeah. By the end, there is only one teen left. They are there to learn the truth about why this place is called Camp Blood by the locals, and who is that really stalking them in the woods? Friday the 13th isn't particularly original, but it was never meant to be. In fact, originality worked against what Sean Cunningham wanted. This film wanted to replicate the success of 1978's Halloween. Sean Cunningham was an aspiring filmmaker. In the early 1970s, he'd made a couple of low-budget and slightly sleazy softcore porn films before helping Wes Craven out in The Last House on the Left in 1972, a film that is still quite shocking today. After all of that, Cunningham was fed up. He needed a hit. What he wanted from Friday the 13th was to sit down and see a film that he had made that would take a lot of money and just have actors on a screen walking about and their mouths opening and words coming out at the right time. Now he didn't know how he would get there, but there was one thing that he did have and that was a title. He had an inspired idea and released a big advert that said Friday the 13th now available. He thought that there must be already a film called Friday the 13th and decided that by placing the ad it would bring out the people who already own the copyright to the title and that they would attempt to sue him and then he could just back down. But that never happened. In fact what did happen is that people called him and wanted to finance the film. Now I'm a big fan of Friday the 13th, just not of this original film. That might sound a bit strange, but I consider the first film to be a launching pad for the more interesting sequels that would almost consistently be released every single year throughout the 1980s. This film for me steals too much from the superior Halloween. Saying that, there are a few things that I do like about this film. And first off, it's because it's a whodunit. Um, not a very successful one, because if you sat down and watched this film, you would never know who actually is the killer by watching this film. It gives you no clues whatsoever. But what I like about the idea that we don't know who the killer is, is that we get all of the POV shots, the point of view shots of the, the killer stalking the teens uh, through the woods. Another thing that I really like about Friday the 13th is that it contains a soundtrack that isn't just synthesizers. What's interesting is that Friday the 13th, with particularly when you take into mind how small the budget was, that Harry Manfredini decided, no, we, we need to add something else here. This needs to be a bigger score than the film that we're actually shooting. Another part of Friday the 13th that I find really great is Tom Savini's special effects. And there's a great story of Tom Savini going to meet with Sean Cunningham and Victor Miller, the screenwriter for Friday the 13th, and going through all the special effects that they needed. And just this man turning up at their house with all these ideas and props and just saying, so what do you want with this scene? Do you want a real axe in a fake head or would you like a fake axe in a real head? And Victor Miller just turning around and going, what is going on here? Friday the 13th is a prime example of one of the first slasher films. It's one of the films that set the template and also laid down the gauntlet to future filmmakers. More often than not, they wouldn't manage the success of Friday the 13th, but when they did, they became huge hits with teenage audiences. Studio bosses started to take notice. What truly made this film, in a lot of people's minds, and particularly in the studio bosses who actually bought Friday the 13th, was the final scare. And the reason why it works is because it happens right at the end. So you've got all these teenagers who are out watching this horror film and then suddenly this massive scare, the biggest scare of the whole film happens right at the end. And then they just spill out into the foyer and it's just a complete word of mouth that they're like, I've got to go and see it again and I'm going to take people who haven't seen it and I'm going to watch their reaction. That's why Friday the 13th was such a huge hit. Friday the 13th may have started life as a complete rip-off of Halloween, but it's a pretty good one. I would love to hear your thoughts. Maybe let me know your favourite slasher film from the 1980s, your favourite horror film from the 1980s, and of course your thoughts on Friday the 13th. 
Next week, it's my final episode of this first series diving back into the 501 must-see movies. And also, it's a Western. I haven't actually reviewed a Western on this channel before. It's called Ride in the Whirlwind. I've got the links for it down below. And I will see you same time next week. Thank you very much. Goodbye.